Welcome to Hardcore Sky Bees, where resources are collected from sifting blocks and breeding bees. Will I be able to survive 100 days, conquer the end, and build myself a place to call home before falling to my death? Keep watching to find out. Alrighty, the first day of a grand adventure. Actually, it's not much of an adventure per se if I'm stuck on an island. Ah well, breaking the tree, crafting some planks, tree breaking me, and expanding my base. I knew I would need water ASAP, so I made a couple crucibles to extract water from my saplings. Okay, now that's gonna take a while. Next, I made some barrels to turn my saplings into dirt, made some sieves, and infested my tree to get string for some meshes and a bed. I sifted a little dirt to get stone pebbles for making cobblestone, and then cried my lonely self to sleep. Day two, I have no lava, so unfortunately, the only way to get cobblestone at this point is by chopping, composting, sifting, chopping, twerking, banging my head, chopping, composting, sifting, composting. Okay, you get the gist. Once I collected enough pebbles, I made the cobble and crushed it into dust. I sifted the dust and got bone meal. Nice. Day three, my crucible had finally finished, so I moved some water into a barrel and tossed dust in there to get clay. Combining the bone meal I had made from day two with the clay from day three, I was able to craft a crucible which I then fired in the furnace and placed on top of a torch. Supposedly, the torch underneath is hot enough to melt my cobblestone into lava. I thought back to my college thermodynamics class to make sense of this process. No, just no. I got quite tired of using eight saplings for one piece of dirt, so I made a little farm to test if seeds or wheat would be faster. They were slower. I expanded the farm anyway and made some bread. Day 4 involved a lot more grinding, you know, composting, sifting, etc. But by the end of the day, my cobble had finally melted, and I upgraded my heat source from a torch to lava. I guess that makes a little bit more sense. On day 5, I did a bit more composting and sifting until I had the materials required for some brick hoppers and a dirt generator. No more composting, but unfortunately I was still stuck with sifting. From the dirt, I had enough saplings for a large spruce tree. Whoa, that's big. From my initial attempts with this pack, I learned a very important lesson. You can't outrun a phantom. Or, well, maybe you can, but I can't. So for three days, I made myself a cute little house that I could hide inside if need be. After making some final tweaks, I was quite happy with my first little house. Over the course of the next three days, I sifted non-stop until all nine of my meshes were upgraded to flint and then to iron. Upgrading them just means that I will unlock new items and have better drop rates for the stuff that I want. Speaking of stuff that I want, where are my bees? I really want bees. You would think they would just spawn somehow, like normal mobs, or fly towards us from the void, but who are we kidding? This is Minecraft. To get my first bee, I needed to call upon my inner witch. I first placed some ancient spores on some dirt to get mycelium. Then I placed down some barrels and filled them with water. Once the water morphed into witch water, I tossed in some more ancient spores to concoct a brown mushroom block. I did this a couple times until one of the blocks finally dropped a brown mushroom. I then grew that mushroom to collect some more. By tossing the mushroom into the same witch water from whence it came, I was able to make slime blocks. With this slime, I was able to craft some leads which would help me move the bees around. Using some of my clay, I crafted a porcelain doll, which I then crafted into a buzzing doll. With magical senses building up inside me, I cast the doll into the bubbling witch water to call upon the spirits and bring a new life into this world. Finally, I will no longer be alone in this abyss. But within a matter of seconds, the bee had better things to do. <laughs> Rest in peace. After all I went through to bring you into this world, you would rather just fly to your death. Ah well. At least I learned my lesson for B number two. B3 wasn't as lucky though. This time I even had my lead ready, but he just bolted out of there. 
Maybe I smelled bad, I mean it's been a while since I've taken a shower. After failing in my attempts to save the bees, I decided to call it quits and made a fourth one. There was no way this one would escape. I then fed each one and watched intently as they got down to business. I'm curious, how does Minecraft decide which parent the baby appears from? I never thought about that before. Anyway, the babies are really cute. The bees really needed a proper place to live, where they could roam free and not be attached to a fence post. So I used all of my dirt to expand the platform, making room for a nice bee house. Now what I wanted to build was an array of honeycombs, and each of those hexagons would be a room for a different breed of bee. But I struggled a surprising amount to try and get a good shape. My first attempt was way too big, and also not even a hexagon. My second attempt looked like a pancake. Third attempt was just disgusting, and fourth attempt was definitely the worst of the lot. I realized at this point that making a hexagon at such a small scale isn't really possible with full blocks, so I tried to use slabs and stairs instead, but yeah, still absolute garbage. This was going to take some work. I tried making the shapes on the ground instead so I wouldn't have to climb up as much, but I messed up and this one wasn't even symmetrical. The second attempt looked a little better, although it wasn't really a hexagon. I decided to build it vertically anyway, and it literally just looked like a diamond shape. I gave it a shot by placing down some logs, but it looked disproportional and still quite large. So I shortened it a bit and turned it into an octagon, which ended up looking the best. I know it's not a hexagon, but I mean, potato potato, they're basically the same. I made a total of five octagons and it actually looked pretty cool, so I extended the logs and stripped them all. Next, I set a lot of sand smelting and went back to fill the bases of the octagons with dirt. I neglected to light it up, so at nighttime I had to deal with a few mobs. The next morning, I bred up my bees and filled in the windows with glass. It looked pretty cool, but I decided to get rid of the glass in the bottom two sections to add in some ladders, and it looked a lot better. It must have looked pretty cozy because some skeletons spawned inside thinking I had built it for them. I lit up the insides and the roof and spent the next day sifting gravel until I had enough iron for a full set of iron armor. I crafted some hives for the bees and moved them over one by one. While the bees are in the hive, they will produce honeycombs which can then be processed into honey. The honeycomb collection process can be automated, but when a dispenser harvests the combs, they will just drop randomly onto the floor, so I needed some sort of item collector which can pick up those items. The one I chose to make was the item collector from Cyclic. This required crystallized amber though, which I would need to craft inside a solidification chamber. The chamber needed obsidian and nether quartz to craft, so I made the obsidian in a stone barrel and put sand into witch water, to convert it into soul sand, and then sifted that into nether quartz. Before I had a chance to craft the solidification chamber, I noticed that some pigs and chickens had spawned in my bee house. I made them some pens beside my cabin and made a spare one just in case I found any cows later on. Anyways, back to the bees. I added the dispenser to automatically harvest the honeycombs and crafted a manual centrifuge to convert the honeycombs into honey bottles. I tried to place the honey in my new solidification chamber, but they wouldn't go in. It was then that I realized I would also need a melting chamber to turn the honey bottles into liquid honey. This seemed a little odd given that I thought the honey bottles were already a liquid, but nevertheless I crafted up the melting chamber and plopped it on top. To operate, these machines needed power, so I did a little research and decided that the heat generators from mechanism would be the easiest to craft. Once the melting chamber had enough energy, it converted the bottles into liquid honey. I expected that the honey would automatically transfer into the solidification chamber, but it turned out that I needed to use some fluid pipes. At this point, I also added in energy pipes so both machines could be powered simultaneously. With all the materials in hand, I crafted the item collector and went to figure out how it worked. Initially, I placed it up in the bee house, but then I realized the range was larger than I thought, so I moved it outside, but it still wasn't working, and turns out I had it facing backwards. I flipped it around and changed the range to encapsulate all of the bee chambers, and it started working. To progress any farther with the bees, I would need a lot more honeycombs, so I left the bees for now to focus on some other tasks. I crafted up a drawer controller and a bunch of drawers to store the items from sifting, because the chess monster was getting a little out of hand. Once all of my items were in the drawers, I checked on my honeycomb supply and did some more centrifuging. Centrifuging? Centrifuging? I went to take a screenie with my bees, but while doing so, I accidentally let some escape. I was honestly quite tired of this manual centrifuging, so I discovered an automatic centrifuge that would do it for me. Once I had enough honey, I crafted a gravel bee spawn egg and spawned one in. I needed a second one of these so I could breed and mass produce them, but I still had to wait on some more honeycombs to be produced. To pass the time this time, I whipped out my hidden landscaping talent to make the ugliest cliff you've ever seen. 
Honestly, it isn't that bad, but definitely not my best work. When I was taking care of some spiders, a creeper snuck up on me. I realized that creepers were actually extremely dangerous in skyblock worlds. Even if the blast doesn't kill me, if I fall down the massive hole that the explosion makes, I'm pretty much done for. I took care of a few more mobs and lit up the new area. The next day I added in some steps and started constructing a tower for my nether portal to go in. Oh, and when I went back to my chest monster to collect some more materials, this happened. I'd like to analyze that in a little bit more detail for a second. Firstly, I mean, I'm blind as a bat because I could have easily seen that creeper and prevented this whole thing from happening, but let me pause it right here when the sound of the creeper made me poop my pants. I'm standing on the rightmost middle sieve, and when I looped back around, that entire row of sieves had gone, so the knockback from the explosion actually saved me from falling to my death. Ironically, day 40 was actually the day I died on one of my initial attempts of Enigmatica 6. There were even more creepers round back, so I tried to take them out. The first one annoyingly blew up my bee house, and three of my bees were able to escape. I took care of the last one, and then luckily caught all the bees before they flew away. I put a few more finishing touches on my tower, and then bred up my gravel bees before calling it a night. On day 41 and 42, I decided to create a massive platform of cobblestone beneath my island. The reasons for this were twofold. Firstly, I wanted an extra layer in case a creeper blew up, and secondly, I have always been scared of vein mining the floor beneath me, so if either of those two were to happen, this platform would hopefully catch me. I found a creeper the next morning and gave my new platform a test. Nice, it didn't break the cobblestone. I tested it again on another creeper to double check. I would have cried if I had built the cobble at the wrong height. Also, I ate bread and got hurt by it? I don't know what happened there. Anyway, I also wanted to upgrade my beehives to a higher tier, because this would mean that more bees could fit in the hives, and that they would produce combs faster. But when I broke the hive, I realized that it didn't even matter if I'd smoked it out. It still angered the bees. I'm sorry. I placed down some upgraded hives and released my gravel bees. By day 44, I had enough honey to craft a dust bee egg. I spent the rest of the day sifting and then plopping some lights on the nether portal tower to make it look a lot better at night. The next morning, I crafted another dust bee egg and bred the two together. Since the creeper messed up my original sieving location, I decided to expand my upper level and build a new area with the max sieve configuration of 5x5. I used another one of those item collectors to automatically pick up the sifted items so they wouldn't constantly fill up my inventory. The item pickup wasn't immediate, so I would need to figure out a way to prevent myself from picking up the items. Before I went to bed, I posed in this position because I thought the island looked super cool with the moon in the sky. On day 47, I placed my cobblestone generator up near my new sifting area, so when I need to hammer cobble into gravel to sift, it's just right here for me. I made a raised wooden platform above the sifters, but I didn't like it very much since I couldn't see the drops I was getting. So I replaced that wood for glass, and then used the chisel and bits mod to break a little opening in the middle block, large enough to reach through, but small enough that I couldn't fall through. I wanted to work on upgrading my sieves, so I spent the entirety of days 49 through 51 crushing and sifting and crafting and crushing and sifting and crafting. I went back on day 52, but was greeted by a really fast zombie in full diamond gear. I tried running away, but was completely out of hunger. I don't know how I got away, maybe the zombie lost sight of me briefly when I went down the steps or something, but somehow I had enough time to eat and sprint back into my house. Once I'd collected my bearings, I went back out to take on the zombie, but I couldn't find it. Turns out it had climbed up the ladder into the bee house and was stuck at the top. This was super lucky for me because when I tried killing it, the hearts took so long to drop. I even broke my iron sword before killing it. After also breaking my pick and my axe, I used my fists to finish it off. There is no way I would have survived if I had tried to face it head on. It dropped some really nice loot though, I got to keep its chestplate and helmet. Looking good. 
I placed down my now upgraded beehives and went over to the gravel bee section to replace the timer, but accidentally hit a bee somehow and they all got mad. I managed to make it out, but I think a few of those bees are now going to die. I placed my dust bees in their new home and crafted up some cobblestone bees. These sound very useless, since we have a cobblestone generator, but cobblestone bees are actually required for breeding some of the more complicated variants later on, like the ender bee, which is ultimately the one that I wanted. The ender bee can get me a lot of ender pearls, but before it can produce any honeycombs, its required flower is an ender block. Thus, I need 9 ender pearls before I can get an ender bee to produce anything. So at this point, I decided to make a mob spawner. For this, I was planning to have a dark room up in the sky with vector plates to push the mobs into a hole and then have them fall to their death. Vector plates require slime balls and black dye, and once I had the materials, I started to create a small dirt platform and then constructed the spawner. Even though I wasn't done, it did seem to be working. I climbed back up to the top to put the remaining vector plates in and started hacking at the mobs. I realized at this point that I should probably have some sort of automatic storage, so I crafted some chests and used hoppers to catch the items. Later that day, I also crafted a Beepedia, which lets me find out more information about my bees. I lit up the roof of my spawner since the rates would be affected if mobs camped up there at nighttime. And when I went down, a witch tried to poison me but ended up poisoning herself. She had a taste of her own medicine, literally. Anyway, it was actually working quite well. Oh, and I now have a cape. It's not that good looking in my opinion, but it's the one I got from migrating my account from a Mojang one to a Microsoft one. Now that I'm starting to have more bees, I crafted a second centrifuge and made some more power generation for it. Heat generators still just seem like the best way to go for now. I then crafted the Civ bee egg, which I could then breed with my dust bee to make a pigman bee. And the pigman bee is the next step towards an ender bee. Unfortunately though, a pigman bee isn't guaranteed every time, so I ended up this time with a redstone bee. At this point, I just had to wait for the bees to be ready to try again. I crafted up rotten flesh from the mob farm into prepared flesh, which I could then cook into leather in the furnace. I was hoping to get into enchanting soon, so I also tried to plant some sugarcane to see if shifting would accelerate its growth like a normal tree does. But it didn't. It was time to try again with my bees, but this time it was a fluorite bee. Unlucky. I crafted some hopper botany pots and filled them with sugarcane. This seemed like the easiest way to automate paper for books. Third time's the charm? Never mind, <laughs> redstone again. To pass the time this time, I crafted some cursed spikes, thinking they would do something special when mobs fell on them. But they didn't work, and in hindsight they may have needed redstone, but I didn't know at the time, so I just gave up on them. Alright, fourth time's the charm. Yeah, no, Sardis Quartz. I upgraded the heat source beneath my crucibles from lava to uranium blocks, but I used the wrong ones. Turns out the proper ones were made with a piece of dust in the center. I used this lava to make obsidian for an enchanting table. Fifth time's the charm? Yeah, still no. Fluorite bee. I crafted the enchanting table and set up some bookshelves around it. At this point, I realized I would need a good source of experience, and right now, my mob spawner was just killing everything with fall damage. There was only one solution. Redstone. It works! Six times the charm. Skeleton bee. Rip. Seventh time? Yes, finally! I placed the last two bookshelves for the enchanting table, made some more obsidian, and grinded some XP. On day 66, I built the nether portal, but I didn't go through it because I was too scared. I wanted diamond armor first. On day 67, I bred the pigmen bee with the cobblestone bee and got my first ender bee. I grabbed nine pearls from my mob spawner and crafted the ender block, which I then placed up in the new bee compartment. I then bred the bees again to get a second ender bee. All through the night, I sifted gravel until I had enough diamonds for a full set of armor, and then enchanted all the pieces with some pretty good results. My boots had multi-jump on them, which let me jump an extra three times. That would be very handy. Oh, and I also made a bow. The next morning, I was feeling a little bit daring, so I put that multi-jump to the test. Phew, uh, that worked. That was extremely dumb, but it did feel good. You would think I would now be ready for the nether, but I kept finding excuses to delay going. I expanded the hill more, put my ender bees in their new hive, crafted a diamond sword, enchanted it, centrifuged the ender honeycombs, made a better shield, and enchanted that too. 
I crafted all the ore chunks that I had gotten from sifting into ores, and uh, okay, now I was ready. Or at least that's what I thought at the time. I went through the portal and saw another fortress not too far off. I made a small platform around the portal and then started bridging. I could see mobs already spawning, which was making me a little bit nervous. I was worried the blazes would hit me off my platform, so I tried to snipe them from far back using my bow, but this happened. Thank goodness I was holding the shift key, or I would have fallen off. I was extremely confused for a second, and it wasn't until trying to shoot again that I noticed two arrows fall down in front of me. My bow had been enchanted with multi-shot, so my theory was that the game must have been glitching out in the nether for some reason, and some of my arrows were flying directly upwards instead of forwards. I traveled back home and enchanted a different bow instead, this time without multi-shot. I took care of the mobs that had spawned on my bridge and then noticed this. There were so many mobs, there was no way I would be able to make it over there safely, so I decided it would be best for me to wait until I had an elytra before trying to tackle the nether. That sounds really weird to say out loud, but yeah, I would need to go to the end before going to the nether. To get to the end in this pack, I would have to craft an end cake, which needs gas tears, and instead of getting those from the nether, I went with a safer option and decided to breed my bees to get gassed bees. Now, to get these ghastly bees, I would need to breed redstone with cobble to get netherrack, netherrack with sand to get soul sand, and finally soul sand with sieve to get ghast. This was going to take a while, so at the same time I also started working on a new house up on the hill, and switching between building and breeding was a little confusing for me to narrate, so instead, here's some music. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I unintentionally made a little bit of a mob spawner. Also, this poor wandering trader happened to step on the exact same block that I broke. I mean, what are the chances of that? Super unlucky, dude. Rest in peace. After a little bit more building, my bees were ready to work. Kids sure do grow up fast. I mean, one minute, they're just a baby, and then before you know it, they're all grown up. I moved the gas bees into their own new hive next to the ender bees and called it a night. The next morning I took care of another round of scary monsters, centrifuged my gassed combs, and checked the recipe again for the ender cake. And there was one tiny ingredient I hadn't considered. The cake. Like the vanilla cake. For that I would need milk, and after 78 days of wandering around I hadn't seen a single cow. After freaking out like a child for a bit and scouring the web, I realized I could simply make a cake in the solidification chamber with honey, eggs, and wheat. I solidified the cake, crafted the end crystals, and cooked up my delicious end cake. Is it just me, or is that the ugliest thing you've ever seen? I didn't even feel like going to the end anymore if I had to eat that. But before annihilating my taste buds, I crafted up some bone blocks to start on the roof of the new house that I was building. I was quite limited in my choice of blocks at this stage, but I think it looks kind of unique. I didn't really have too much time to faff about if I wanted the elytra, so I made my way back to the cake, held my nose, and took a big juicy bite. Instantly I was whisked out of my home and appeared in the end dimension. I said the void in Enigmatica 6 looked cool, but I gotta take that back. Shaders made this void look epic. It even made the Endermen look extra creepy with their glowing purple eyes. Anyway, there was no time to waste. I drew back my bow and sniped the end crystals one by one. There were a couple close encounters, but nothing as scary as this one. What even happened there? I first scrolled to my water bucket, because that's what Dream does, but then I realized I wasn't Dream and I suck at Minecraft, so I swapped to an Ender Pearl threw it terribly, and then tried to MLG water bucket again, but missed. Given that I didn't take much damage, I think it must have been the feather falling on my boots that saved me. Regardless, that seriously freaked me out. The rest of the fight was pretty straightforward, and I finished her off with one final arrow.
I went to collect the egg, but it fell through the portal. Rip. I then bridged my way to the outer end island portal and traveled through. I gotta say, it felt quite nice being somewhere other than my main island. One of my favorite parts of modded Minecraft is the exploration component, and with skyblocks you don't typically get to do much of that. During my quest to find an elytra, I came across this weird plant that grew really fast while I was sprinting or shifting. I also noticed that it followed me wherever I went, so I drew a quick message. A few minutes later I came across my first end city, but this one was absolutely tiny. I decided to loot it anyway and came across another end city quite quickly afterwards, but this one also didn't have a ship. There was a bit of a close call with this one, and I did an MLG water bucket. Nailed it, you didn't see anything. I somehow managed to anger three endermen at once, but I had my bucket ready. Easy peasy. The fog actually got much thicker as I dropped lower in Y level, so much so that at one point I could only see a couple blocks in front of me. I managed to make it through though and kept exploring until I finally found another end city on day 87. And this one had a ship. It was super close to the ground, so I tried to pearl up to it, but I somehow got stuck in some blocks, and no matter what I tried to break, I couldn't escape. Thankfully, I thought of using an ender pearl again, and that saved me. I took care of the shulker and grabbed my first elytra. It actually looks pretty cool with the cape design, I'm not gonna lie. I also snagged the dragon head and looted the rest of the end city. I feel like my luck is always terrible when finding my first elytra. Look how far I had to travel for this one. At this point, I wanted to find one of those portals to get home. But first, I actually came across another end city with a ship. It was quite handy though, because I was getting worried that my first elytra would break before I found a portal home. And sure enough, I did have to swap it out later. I then came across a third ship took the elytra, and luckily found a portal home right next to the city. This enderman wanted me gone just as much as I did. We did it, with 13 days to spare. There was still a lot I wanted to get done in these last 13 days, and I knew I'd be hard at work right up until the last day. When I got home, I took a quick victory lap around my base to see it from the sky. It was definitely coming together, but the torch spam was kind of ruining the aesthetic. But hey, safety first, this is hardcore after all. On day 88, I used an anvil to combine my gear with some of the ones that I found in the end city to simply improve the overall stats of my stuff. Even with all the XP from the dragon fight, I still had to collect quite a bit more. That night, I noticed the egg from the end had ended up at home, so I picked it up properly this time using a torch. My elytras wouldn't last much longer without the mending enchantment, so my next major goal was to get a mending villager. Unfortunately though, it's a sky block, so I wasn't going to find a village anywhere, thus the way I needed to do it was to cure a zombie villager. I spent the night isolating one from the crowd of mobs spawning around my new house, but I accidentally killed it. This was going to be a painful process the next couple of nights, trust me. The next day I worked a little bit more on my roof and decided to make the bee area a little nicer. The way I decided to do this was to make it look a little overgrown by drooping leaves over it. Before I was done though, it was nighttime again, and I attempted to capture zombie villager number two. I was successfully able to lure this one into my house and trap it in a hole, but it didn't want to pick up anything I threw at it, meaning it had despawned by the next morning. On day 90, I noticed one of those player mobs wearing netherite armor. I knew instantly that this was another one of those ridiculously overpowered bosses. I was able to snipe it from on top of my beehive, but it had a lot of health so I ran out of arrows. I flew over to my mob spawner to stock up on some more, but when I came back the boss had disappeared. Sure enough, for some reason it fell to the same fate as the zombie from earlier. What is so interesting about this ladder? I think the bosses are just jealous of how privileged my bees look in their luxurious hives. I shot the boss a lot more until it finally died. It dropped a cool axe that actually smelted logs when I broke them. I put a few finishing touches on the hive, and honestly, it looks a lot better now with that extra foliage. Night was approaching again, and this time I had a plan. Apparently, it was a super dumb plan, but I thought at the time I was being clever. I isolated and lured another zombie villager into my hole and tried to dispense a helmet on it. It didn't work, and when I googled it, it turns out you can't actually dispense heads on zombie villagers. Well. On day 91, I cooked up some glass and filled in the windows to my new house. That night, I found another zombie villager and threw this guy a helmet just in case I would get lucky, but yeah, no. <laughs> Figures. A skeleton boss spawned in my house, and again, I cheesed it. My next master plan was to get a name tag to prevent the zombie villager from despawning, and the only place I knew of where I could get that was in the nether fortress, so I hopped back through the portal and flew my way over. But as expected at this point, there wasn't a single name tag in the fortress. The trip wasn't a total waste though as I managed to get a blaze rod, which meant I could finally make a brewing stand and craft up some weakness potions to convert the zombie villager immediately. 
Just as I finished making those potions, I noticed a zombie villager fall down in my mob spawner. I quickly blocked it off and got rid of the other mobs. The zombie villager was only at half a heart though, so I wanted to heal it first. I found a potion of healing that dropped from a witch, converted it into a splash potion, and... You know what? I can't even be mad anymore. That night, I thankfully found another one and lured it inside. This time, I splashed it with a weakness potion and fed it the apple. We did it. I was so excited, I gave its big nose a kiss, crafted a lectern, and got started on the grindy process of breaking and replacing the job block until I finally got a mending book. As per usual, this took ages. And I was in such a rhythm that I almost didn't notice when I got it. 38 emeralds for a mending book is ridiculously expensive, but the discount I got for healing the villager made it a little bit more affordable. Ah, finally. I spent the rest of the day at the mob spawner until all of my stuff was repaired. For the last three days of this challenge, I decided to focus on trying to complete my new house. I was able to get a bit more of the roof done, but unfortunately I ran out of bones pretty quickly. I added in some paths around my base, bought off some phantoms, sorted my items into some new chests, killed another boss, and moved my sifting storage to the new base. The main reason for this was so I could connect it up with my new sifting station. And with that, I was done. I had successfully survived 100 days in hardcore skybees. I wasn't sure if I could make it this long without walking off the edge, but somehow I managed. This video took me over 70 hours to put together, so if you did make it this far and you want to see more, please consider subscribing and tapping the bell. Also, thank you for all the support on my last video. It's performing so much better than I could have ever asked for. Oh, and please put bees in the comment section so I can personally thank each of you for making it to the end.